Should you use a traditional waterfall approach to build power platform apps? That's what you're going to learn about in this episode. The answer is never. <laughs> That's a short episode. Hey, only joking. Uh, everyone should try applying a waterfall approach just once. Analyze the requirements in advance, document the components up front, build and test everything before letting your users see anything. At the end, review the lessons learned so that you can't apply any improvements to the project you've just finished, late and over budget, but maybe you can to the next one. Do it just once so that you can experience what a risky, miserable way of working waterfall can be. Good day, I'm Neil Benson, your host for another episode of Amazing Apps, here to help you master agile practices and build amazing apps on the Microsoft Power Platform and Dynamics 365. Amazing Apps is a result of my curiosity and experiments with new ways of building amazing business apps and high-performing teams. It's full of advice from my guests and examples from some of my work over the last few years leading business applications teams. If you enjoy this episode, head on over to amazingapps.show for additional resources. You'll find more episodes of Amazing Apps, as well as my videos, free workshops, eBooks, and my online training courses. Okay, so I have feelings, strong opinions about using a waterfall approach, mostly born from my personal experience, to be honest. I worked on several traditional projects where we spent many months, years in some cases, in the analysis and design phases without delivering any valuable software. At a media organization in the UK, the customer asked us to rerun the analysis and design phase three times because they lacked any confidence in the process. At a bank, we spent 18 months in analysis with nothing to show for it except lots of documentation. And my first agile project was a result of a massive requirement specification that our customer rejected. It was too long, filled with technical jargon, while at the same time, it was ambiguous and incomplete. Are there any circumstances under which I'd recommend you consider adopting a waterfall approach instead of an agile approach for your Power Platform projects? Well, I found out a list of six scenarios on a LinkedIn article recently where the author recommended a waterfall approach. The author isn't a Power Platform or Dynamics 365 professional, but he has a couple of Scrum and Safe certifications and lots of experience as a Scrum Master. So let's take his list and see if any of his scenarios apply to our kinds of business apps in the Power Platform corner of the universe. Number one, predictable and well-defined requirements, when the requirements are clear and unlikely to change. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that one. If nearly all the requirements are known and can be agreed up front without too much risk of change, then a waterfall approach is probably a good one. But most business apps projects aren't like that. We don't know the requirements up front. We can't know the requirements up front. We're building complex software that nobody's ever built before. Requirements are going to emerge when stakeholders review what's been built. When you learn that fact, you realize the value of getting features released early and often into production, at least close to production. But maybe you're doing, maybe you're doing an upgrade. Dynamics AX 2012 to 365 finance and operations. Customer wants a simple lift and shift. No changes to business processes, no new features, minimize the change and the disruption on business operations. These kinds of projects are rare. And I think they're rare because they're foolish. If your business hasn't changed much since 2012, you're probably going out of business. If you're working on a project with those kinds of constraints, good luck to you. I hope you don't die of boredom before the, you know, lift is shifted. <laughs> Number two, safety critical or regulated systems in industries like aerospace, healthcare, or finance, where safety and compliance are paramount. I reckon, false argument. What do you think? At Superware, we've developed Resolve, a complaints management app for Australian financial services organizations that have to comply with Regulatory Guide 271 for internal dispute resolution. Failure to comply with RG 271 leads to fines and the case of at least one fund last year, court action. We use Scrum to build Resolve 
and we use Scrum to configure and deploy it for financial services organizations. And I know lots of other teams that have used Scrum and other agile approaches to build apps used in pharma, energy, utilities, healthcare, lots of other regulated industries. There's no fundamental reason why your app can't comply with regulations when it was built using an iterative incremental approach. Maybe, maybe this argument stems from the belief that agile teams don't document their apps. And we know that regulators require documentation, right? But all good software teams document their apps. You're documenting your apps, right? Agile teams just document their apps at what I consider to be a more appropriate time after the feature is built instead of beforehand. Number three, fixed price or fixed scope contracts. We deliver apps for a fixed price all the time. We've done it for years. We use an agile estimation approach to help the customer forecast how much it'll cost and how long we think it will take to build all the features they think they want. Quick plug, join my free Estimating Business Apps course if you want to learn how to do this quickly, accurately, and confidently. Those estimates that we come up with help the customer set a budget. And that budget is often fixed. Politically, nobody wants to go back to the powers that be and ask for more money. What's not fixed is the scope. As the stakeholders get to review working software, they're entitled to change their minds about the next most valuable feature they want us to build. A fixed scope app is really another case of scenario number one, an app with predictable and well-defined requirements. They are theoretically possible, but most of us will never see a set of fixed requirements in our entire power platform careers. Number four, small, simple projects. Yeah, I happen to agree with this one. If you're building a Canvas app on Excel, you don't need Scrum. In fact, you don't need an agile approach to build most simple productivity apps when you have a tiny team and a small set of users. You probably don't need much of an approach at all. Would you benefit from using an agile approach when you're implementing Business Central, let's say, for a small business and you're using an industry template that you've proven many times before? Probably not. But I'd love to hear from more BC teams, because I know some of you use Scrum. I know you're out there. Come and look me up. I'd love to hear your story. Scrum is best suited to complicated or complex work where the requirements are not well understood and the solution can't easily be designed up front. It's overkill for simple work. If you want to learn more about the categorization of different types of work, I'll leave a link to the Kanefin model in the episode description. Number five, what are you up to? Five, teams with limited agile experience. This is true too, but easily fixed. Hop on to my successful Scrum for Microsoft Business Apps course, learn Scrum, get certified, find out my proven practices for applying Scrum to Power Platform and Dynamics 365. Like Neo in the Matrix, you'll feel like you're ready for Kung Fu. Still, I recommend hiring an experienced Scrum Master to coach your team and the customer along the way and try and start on a small project in a low-risk environment to get started. But not having experience in something isn't a reason to avoid gaining the experience. In fact, when I say it like that, the argument sounds daft. Imagine saying we shouldn't develop software until we know how to develop software, or we shouldn't learn how to drive a car because we don't know how to drive a car. Doing is one of the best ways of learning. Okay, last one, number six, projects with significant dependencies. Not sure about this one. Gantt charts seem to create dependencies, or at least they appear to me to bake them into the plan and set them in hard concrete. What we should do instead is find ways of breaking dependencies, and Gantt charts don't seem to help with that. Big teams, AWS, NVIDIA, Azure, they have hundreds, maybe thousands of teams shipping features every few minutes. They tackle dependencies using agile approaches and innovative team topologies that eliminate or at least try to eliminate dependencies. They don't throw up their hands and say, oh, well, I guess we need to wait for those 47 other teams to update their APIs before we can ship this new feature that we've been working on for six months. No. Look for a link in the episode description to Matthew Skelton's piece on team topologies. It was on the 
software engineering radio podcast a couple of weeks ago. He's got lots more examples of how to eliminate bottlenecks just through the way that you arrange your organization and structure your teams. Just to recap then, six possible scenarios when a linear waterfall approach makes more sense than an approach like Scrum. One, predictable requirements. Agree, but more chance of the moon being made out of cheese. Two, safety critical or regulated requirements. Disagree, have counter evidence. Three, fixed price contracts. Disagree, have heaps of counter evidence. Number four, small, simple projects. Agree, kind of. Small and simple might not need any formal approach at all. Waterfall could be overkill too. Number five, teams with limited agile experience. That doesn't make any sense. Number six, significant dependencies. Disagree. Waterfall approaches don't unscramble dependencies, but Gantt charts do a good job of scaring the bejesus out of you without solving the problem. So there you have it. Neil Benson, Scrum's biggest champion, probably, over here in the Power Platform corner of the universe, says that you should use a waterfall approach when you're stuck doing lift and shift upgrades and your career was going nowhere fast anyway. But I know you. If you're into amazing apps, you're better than that. You're smarter than that. Keep experimenting.